Hey everyone, welcome to the next Earth Science review video. This is going to be video number 30, which I can't believe, but we are in unit 8 wrapping up the year. This is going to be plate tectonics. So there's a lot of information in this unit. Um, this is not a substitute for studying your notes and looking over what your teacher told you to look over. So I'm going to give you the, the crash course very quickly. So feel free to pause the video at any point if it's too quick for you and you need to write anything down. All right, without further ado, here we go. Theory of plate tectonics. So to start off, you have to know that the Earth has this thing called a lithosphere for its ground level. That's just all the rocks on the Earth. And the lithosphere is broken up into these things called plates. So you could see on this map all the different plates. So essentially, the plates are moving right now. And back in the day, millions of years ago, they used to be all together as one continent called Pangaea. Here's the evidence that we know that this was the case. The first thing is the continents fit together like puzzle pieces. The second one is that we found matching fossils on the borders of where they fit together. The third one is that mountain ranges were literally found also on the border where they were fit together and um, they're like a continuation of a mountain that was cut in half. Also, we found evidence that there was glacial striations in South Africa. So the only way there could have been a glacier in South Africa is if it was moved. And we also found coal, which forms from tropical plants that are now found in really, really cold places, which doesn't make any sense. So we know the continents are currently in motion. Now, on these plate boundaries is where you're going to get most of your volcanoes and earthquakes. Now, this chart shows actually a lot of information. So first of all, this bottom layer, this red area, this is called the asthenosphere, and we're going to talk about that more in a couple minutes. Um, but essentially, you've got these giant convection cells here, which is when heat rises right here, and then it moves back over this way and sinks back down and comes up in a circular pattern like this, like two wheels essentially like that. And what's happening is as the magma is going to rise up here, it's going to come out of the center of the Earth right there, and it's also going to pull the plates apart from one another as it diverges here. So this is your, essentially your reason that the plates are moving is because of these convection currents in the asthenosphere layer of the Earth. So that's right here. Very, very important little facts right there. All right, we're going to go through each plate boundary and I'm going to tell you what they create. So the first one we're going to talk about is convergent, is when the plates are moving towards each other. You could have pretty much two main scenarios. The first one's going to be if you have a continental plate smashing into an oceanic plate. That's going to give you these three facts right here. These are the three things that are created. You get a subduction zone. Subduction, subduction zone just means that the plate is sinking underneath another plate. You could see that happening here. And the reason for that is because it's more dense. So oceanic crust is more dense than continental crust, so it sinks underneath. And again, we call that a subduction zone. The point at which the subduction zone is diving underneath is called a trench. So it's like this really deep part of the ocean. And once it melts underneath there, it rises back up at mag as magma and you get volcan volcanic like chains essentially. You can see all these volcanoes right here that are, that are forming. The next scenario you can get is a continental plate hitting another continental plate. And since they are equal density, you're going to get a mountain that forms because they're just going to go upwards. And your, your number one example of this is going to be Mount Everest in the Himalayan mountains in like northern India, southern Asia area. The second type of plate boundary is divergent. That's when they're going to be breaking apart. Essentially, lava is going to come out of this rift here. A rift valley is like a giant gap in the floor. And essentially, the, the magma pours out of this rift in the middle of the ocean, right? The magma that's at the rift right here is the newest magma or the youngest. And as the plate is pulled apart, it drags that new magma all the way out here, uh, new rock essentially, which is then would be older. So if they ask you about where you would find younger or older rock, the younger new rock is always formed right here at the rift. That's that giant scar in the middle of the ocean floor. And the act of the plates being pulled apart at this point is called seafloor spreading because the seafloor is literally spreading apart. You're also going to get this feature called a mid-oceanic ridge that's formed at this spot. So anything to do with mid-ocean ridges is always going to be divergent plate boundaries. And here's what we said before about the youngest rock being found at the ridge. And the older, the further you go, the older the rock gets. So the further away you go, the older it gets. 
The other thing you could be asked about is about um, the Earth's magnetic field, which periodically switches. Now, all you got to know about this is that here's the your middle point, your mid-Atlantic ridge. You want to see a mirror image on both sides. So if you look, this, this pattern here on the left is mirror image on the right. So essentially, it should duplicate the same pattern as you start from the inside and go to the outside. So you always want to look for the mirror. The minerals inside rocks actually align themselves with the Earth's magnetic field. So we see that they're changing directions, which means the Earth's magnetic field is periodically switching. The last boundary is called transform boundary. This is when the plates slide past each other like this. So they're not going towards and they're not going away. They're going past each other. The San Andreas Fault in California is your main example of the transform boundary in the United States. And you're going to get a fault at this area, which is just essentially a breakage in the rock. And this is where you're going to get earthquakes. Lastly, hot spots is just a giant magma chamber underneath the earth, and it stays in the same spot. Hawaii is an example of islands that are formed from a hot spot. And all you got to know about hot spots essentially is that Wherever the hotspot is, which in this case here, is your newest island. And again, the further you go away from the hotspot, the older and older the island would be. Here's a little cheat sheet for you uh, that goes over the three boundaries. You can see the arrows and it shows what is created at each one. If you want to pause this, you can and just look at this. It's pretty good. Next is the law of superposition. The only thing to know about the law of superposition is that the oldest layer of rock is always on the bottom and the youngest layer of rock is always towards the top. For fossil evidence being found on top of mountains, it's pretty interesting that we find sea creatures on the top of mountains. This is called having a displaced fossil. And the way this happens is that the, the land essentially was uplifted from where the ocean floor was. So the fossil did end up on the ocean floor, but then that area was uplifted onto the top of a really high elevation, which gives you sea creatures on top of mountains, essentially. Now, the opposite of having the area uplifted is if the area subsides, which is called subsidence. So this is going to give you essentially sea creatures that can be found at shallower depth. We find them all the way at the bottom of the ocean because all that, that land sunk essentially down. All right, I'm going to give you quick overviews on the two main Earth Science Reference Table chart for plate tectonics. The first one is going to be page five, which looks like this. So there's latitude and longitude on here. If you need a refresher on that, you can watch my latitude longitude video. But your big hints are all going to be at the bottom. So here's what transform looks like, which creates a fault. Here's what divergent looks like, which creates mid-ocean ridges. It gives you that down here. Here's what convergent looks like, which creates subduction zones. And here's what a complex uncertainty plate boundary looks like. Or here's what a mantle hotspot looks like. So you can go around, look at the arrows, look at the hotspots, and they can ask you all sorts of questions about this page. But that's essentially it. Just look at the arrows and read the bottom. All right, page 10 is the other one that I'm going to give you a really fast overview on because this is a very, very in-depth chart. I'm going to try to just hit the big picture uh, things here. The first thing is your density side. So it tells you the density of continental crust and oceanic crust right here. And it also tells you that continental crust is made of granite and oceanic is made of basalt. Now, as you go deeper and deeper into the earth, so these are all the layers of the earth. Here's your asthenosphere with your convection currents, your stiffer mantle, outer core, inner core. It tells you the densities of those layers here. It also tells you that the outer core is made of iron and nickel and the inner core is made of iron and nickel. A fact to know about the outer core is that it's the only layer that's a liquid. And there's a couple of things up here that are little hints. It shows a convergent plate boundary here in case you forget what that is. It says there's your trench. It shows a divergent plate boundary here with the mid-Atlantic ridge. And it reminds you that the lithosphere is made up of the crust and the rigid mantle. It also reminds you that the nickname for the asthenosphere is the plastic mantle because that lava in there, the magma is partially melted, so it's not a full liquid. So we go down here and they can ask you what the pressure is inside the earth at different boundaries or in different layers. So for example, if they ask you what the pressure is between the outer core and the inner core, you want to go to this boundary here between those two layers and go down until you hit this black line. 
So it's the pressure at the outer core, inner core boundary would be about 3.1 and the unit is million atmospheres. So they can ask you this about any boundary. So that would be that boundary and then this would be this boundary, so on and so forth. So that's the pressure graph. Now, if you were to continue down on those boundaries, you can get the temperature too. So it's, it's pretty easy. So here's your temperature graph down here. So say I wanted to get the temperature of the outer inner core boundary as well. I would just continue to follow the line until I hit the temperature line down here and then look across and it's about 6,200 and then your unit on this one's degrees Celsius. So that's the, the two graphs on here, pressure, temperature. The only other thing they can really ask you is about the depth, how deep the layers are. So you literally, like I'll just stay with my boundary here, outer core, inner core, continue to follow that line down and it'll tell you how deep it is. So that's about 5,000 kilometers deep that boundary, right? If they ask you about the thickness of the boundary, you do the end value minus the start value of that layer. So if they wanted the thickness of uh, the outer core, I would say, okay, it was 5,000 at the end and then 3,000 at the start, about, so it would be about 2,000 kilometers thick. This is about actually 2,900, so it would be like 2,100 kilometers thick. So they could ask you that about each any layer. All right, so that was a really, really fast crash course on plate tectonics. So here's where we do our practice questions. So if you want, feel free to pause, answer, and then I'll go over the answer. Number one, the map below shows the continent of Australia. Letters A and B indicate locations on the Earth's crustal surface. Compared to the crust at A, the crust at B would be... Well, the first thing is the A crust is continental and the B crust is oceanic. So I know that the oceanic crust is thinner and more dense. You're going to have to remember that. Continental is thicker and less dense. So crust at B would be thinner and more dense. So the answer was B. Number two, the interior of the Earth between a depth of 5,200 and 6,300 kilometers is inferred to be composed of mostly what? So for this one, you want to go to page 10 on the reference table. Go to the depth that it tells you, so 5,200 and 6,300. Looks like we are here, which means we're in the inner core and it says it's made of iron and nickel. D. Number three, what are the pressure and temperature of the boundary between the outer and inner core? All right, so this is another page 10. We talked about how to do this. Go to the outer and inner core boundary right here. Go down to the pressure line. So it's looking like 3.1 million atmospheres, about. And then down here to the temperature line, about 6,200. So we want 3.1, 6,200. 3.1, 6,300. Close enough. Answer is A. Sometimes you got to estimate on these questions. Number four, the Himalayan mountains are located along a portion of the southern boundary of their Eurasian plate. At the top of Mount Everest in the Himalayan mountains, climbers have found fossilized marine shells in the bedrock. How is this possible? All right, so you have to know marine means ocean. So the way that you find ocean fossils on a mountain is that the Sea floor must have been uplifted. So C is your best answer. The ocean floor was rising up. Number five, the aerial photograph below shows two streams that have been displaced by tectonic movement along the San Andreas Fault. The arrows show the plate movement. What type of movement would this be? All right, the hours are going past each other. That is transform. So you should, you can just check on the bottom of page five on the reference table to get that answer. The convergent, remember, is if they're going towards. Divergent is they're going away. Transform is if they're going opposite. Number six, we got a plate boundary here. Which diagram do the arrows show the correct direction at this type of plate boundary?
All right, this is oceanic crust hitting continental crust, and the oceanic crust is going to subduct, remember, underneath the continental crust. So these are hitting each other, and then it melts, makes magma, and you get your volcanic change. This is subduction zone, and that's a trench. So you want them to be coming at each other, so your best answer is going to be B. Number seven, which tectonic feature is associated with a complex or uncertain plate boundary? All right, you would go to page five and you would look, look at these four spots. So we would find Southwest Indian Ridge, which is right here. So that does not look like complex. We want the dotted line. Then we would go to the next one, East African Rift. We would find East African Rift, which is over here. And that looks like dotted lines, so that's probably the answer, but then you would just check the other two. Mariana Trench. That's right here. That's convergent, see the little squares. And then the last one was the Galapagos Hotspot. A hotspot is a hotspot. So, but the line there shows that that would be divergent. So your best answer here is going to be the East African Rift, B. Number eight, the movement of plates is inferred by many sciences to be driven by. Your answer on this one should be C, convection currents in the asthenosphere. That's that heat rising and cold sinking and it drags the plates along with it. Number nine, the cross section below shows the direction of movements of a plate over a hot spot resulting in a chain of volcanoes labeled A, B, C, and D. The age of C is shown to, as 8 million years. So they want you to predict what the ages of B and D volcano would be. So remember, here's the hot spot. So this is the newest one. So as you go out, it gets older and older. So B should be less than eight and D should be more than eight. So it looks like B is five and D is 12, that hits it. So A is the best answer. All right, last question. Which cross section best represents the magnetic field pattern west of the Mid-Atlantic Ridge? All right, remember, you want to find the mirror image that fits in over here. So you want to, this, this black area here should be right here on the right. So the only ones that that could be is this one and this one. And you want it to be the exact same size and, and pattern as this, this pattern here. So the answer here is A. If you were to put A in this spot, it would be a perfect mirror image. All right, so I know that was pretty quick. Um, good luck with plate tectonics. We got a couple more videos left to finish the whole series. Look forward to seeing you there. Good luck on your tests and good luck with the rest of your school year. See you later.